After the tragic Parkland, Florida high school shooting that left 17 people dead and another 14 injured, there are questions about mental health, there are questions about gun control, and there are questions about safety in schools. But we should also talk about the one thing 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz, who authorities say confessed to the killings, had in common with all but three of the mass shooters in the past 36 years. He was a man. As Harper's Bazaar writer Jennifer Wright pointed out February 16th, Cruz is yet another example of how male aggression can manifest itself in deadly ways. Note, for example, in seemingly random school shootings, sociologist Catherine Newman told Live Science that status tends to be at issue for perpetrators. In what that article describes as a typical school shooting, where the shooter is part of the school community, all of the perpetrators have been male. In a spreadsheet compiled by Mother Jones, details are offered on mass shootings beginning in 1982, when a junior high school teacher shot and killed eight people in a Miami welding shop. That list, which looks at cases in which three or more people were killed through 2012, or four or more after 2013, includes only three female perpetrators. In general, women kill far less than men do. Live Science reports they're responsible for between 10 and 13 percent of U.S. homicides. In a New York Times study of mass shooting, which it defined as those that killed four or more people between 2009 and mid-2015, domestic violence was a common thread. In the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida, the perpetrator was Omar Mateen, a man whose ex-wife said he abused her. As the New York Times wrote, in 57 percent of the cases, the victims included a current or former intimate partner or family member of the attacker. Half of all victims were women. Nearly a third of mass shootings have taken place in workplaces by an angry, typically male, former employee, according to The Guardian. Like in the 1986 Oklahoma post office shooting, which happened after a male employee received a negative review. That shooting was followed by other post office shootings of the 1990s. And, as Wright with Harper's Bazaar points out, the concern over mental health issues does not correlate to the killings. The National Survey on Drug Use and Health reported in 2012 that 23 percent of women have a diagnosable mental illness. Only 16.8 percent of men do. So what's the difference between men and women? Some researchers point to the gender gap in violence, a result of evolution rewarding men for aggression. Others note how often sexual frustration is evident in the writings in social media and words of male killers. In the 1991 shooting at a Luby's cafeteria in Killeen, Texas, George Hennard Jr., who killed 23 people, was reportedly heard yelling, is it all worth it? What they have done to me in Texas? All women of Killeen and Belton are vipers. Elliot Rogers, who shot and killed seven people near the University of California, Santa Barbara, preemptively called the 2014 rampage his day of retribution in a YouTube video. He reportedly could be seen recounting his frustrations, saying, I've been forced to endure an existence of loneliness, rejection, and unfulfilled desires, all because girls have never been attracted to me. Girls gave their affection and sex and love to other men, never to me. Solving America's mass shooting problem, and make no mistake, there is definitely one, will not just be about fixing legislative loopholes or finding funds to address a mental health crisis. Instead, it will require a little bit of everything. Call your legislators, vote for the people who uphold your values, Think seriously about what it will take and what it will cost to get help to the people who need it. But also remember that we need to be raising our next generation of men to know that what makes a strong man isn't a gun in his waistband and a woman around his arm.